Welcome back to my cool invention network. I'm Akos the Solutionist, Andrew Jankera, <clears throat> co-hosting. And we just had a great pitch from one of our inventors, and you guys are out there voting. Go to mycoolinventions.com to vote for that uh, inventor. Now, we're gonna. De- this is the part of the show we talk about selling secrets, things that things that get the ball moving, things that yep. get the inventor going, things entrepreneurism uh, secrets that people need to know, and all the pitfalls they're gonna run into. Maybe you're a product owner, maybe you're a product developer, maybe you're an inventor, maybe you got your own store out there. Pitfalls that happen uh, in the course of the business that you don't learn in school. Because I don't know. I mean, we've done a lot of. You know, we've learned, we went to school ourselves, and and let me tell you something. We we find things that they teach us that don't really apply in the real world. Mm. And then you get to the real world and you learn stuff that, hey, nobody taught me this. And this is where you crash. So this is the part of the segment we always talk about that will help you uh, get away from those pitfalls. Now, today's topic, I want to talk about how do you pick a manufacturer, all mm, right? How cool. do you pick a manufacturer for your product? Now, we have a lot of experience in this. For example, if you go to evine.com, there's about 80 different products that we sell to them. In fact, if you go to evine.com and just type the word ACOS, A-K-O-S, my first name, all my products show up. And you'll notice there, there's things like chemicals and cleaning and laundry soap, and, and then there's metal and plastics and kitchen gadgets all across the scope. And let me tell you something, uh, we have tons of manufacturers that we rely on. And let me say to this, I mean, this is where the topic always comes up. So some are Chinese, some are American. Why do we use American manufacturers sometimes? Why do we use Chinese manufacturers sometimes? Let me just cover that for a second, all right? This is a big debate, especially with the current administration, who's putting, we're having now a trade war with China. All kinds of tariffs are being slapped uh, on each other, and now we're warring it out, and I don't know, nothing good comes of it. I just read this morning that over these tariffs, uh, Harley Davidson, who's now been, uh, oh, yeah. you know, not, now been tariffed in China, all they're doing is they just move the manufacturing for the Chinese exports out of America. They're now making them somewhere else. They're going to make them in Europe. And they're going to say, well, to heck with America. If that's what they're going to do to us, we'll make that stuff. And now uh, Europeans are getting jobs that should have been Americans because of these Thai- Chinese tariffs. So, so you know, when do you, and it, we're, we're scared too, because because what's going to happen if they start tariffing plastics or they start tariffing things that we buy? Oh. So, you know, these are all things you should consider the current uh, political environment uh, uh, also when it comes to choosing between a Chinese manufacturer and American manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, trade wars never work. Trade wars always, always hurt us because all that happens is the free market just adjusts to it. And you always have to ask yourself the question, how will it adjust? I mean, will it will, will, will lower jobs or increase jobs or lower taxes, increase taxes? These are all questions. And if you're an yeah. inventor, you got to ask yourself the question, will I get hurt if I put all my eggs in that basket over there and something changes? Now, we choose Chinese manufacturing when there's a lot of labor involved, okay? Because raw materials, if it's plastic or metal or steel, they're the same in America and in China. There's no difference. It's an open market, free market. They're commodities, right? What difference is is the labor rate, because over there is a really inexpensive labor rate. Right. So now today with all this automation and manufacturing, you know, not a lot of things get touched by human hands. I mean, less and less and less and less, giving the tipping the scales in the America favor on certain things, all right? For example, chemicals, all right? So so we make uh, cleaning products, and we use a, comp- we use a couple companies. We have one in Chicago, we have one in Niagara Falls, we have one in uh, Long Island. And, and what we do is different people have different skill sets, but we, we ba- package chemicals here in America. Right. Why? Is the labor cheaper? No. Uh, but these factories are pretty automated. Not a lot of human hands actually touch the bottle. All right. Yeah. Uh, is the liquid cheaper? No. All right. However, liquid is heavy. You know, yeah, it's remember, way too it, Yeah. So remember, remember, we did this in school. How much does a 16 ounce bottle weigh? Oh, you got me in that on Imperial. Okay, uh, half a liter. Six, half a liter is going to be uh, about a pound. About a pound. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so there's a pound of liquid in one bottle. So, for example, on one skid of those bottles. Now, you've been working in the warehouse. You've had been thrown around a few skids now. Yeah. There's 1,440 bottles on a skid. <laughs> That's 1,440 pounds. That That's not nothing to ship. So suddenly, if you're shipping 40 of these skids, all right, now you've got maybe a shipping issue. So yeah. in China. 
we would spend, you know, we, we've been talking about how much it costs to move a container recently. Right. You've got four and six thousand dollars being quoted, right, for That's your right, container. For a forty foot container. Yeah, forty foot container. So if you're gonna add six thousand dollars to, you know, how many bottles, you know, twenty thousand bottles, okay, now we're paying thirty, forty cents a bottle just mm -hmm. to get it here. Okay. Yeah. So now you look at the American side and say, okay, how much does it cost to make here? It might cost twenty five cents more a bottle to make here. But if the if if the shipping rate is forty cents more coming here, well, America wins, all right. Yeah. And so we find that in the packaging companies, I think America is still pretty strong when it comes to packaging companies. That's why your wet wipes, that's why your uh, Clorox wipes, that's why a lot of bottling stuff. Um, usually, people don't buy that from China; they buy it domestically because uh, because of the shipping rate and because not a lot of well, that's a factory. You see a lot of humans touching, but a lot of factories aren't like that. They're all automated. You yeah. should see the you should see the uh, uh, the laundry sheet factory. And my gosh, they, those guys! In fact, I was here. The guy was calling me, the owner of the company. Um, I mean, they start a run of laundry sheets. It's like a machine goes. Yeah. It's like newspapers flying past you, and you know, and nobody touches it. I don't. I think he's got one guy operating the machine, and I think another guy holds a box and then pulls another box. But I mean, I mean, it's insane. There's only a couple of people working well, there. It's all done by machines. Right? Yeah, well, I was I was in the beverage business for. A oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. How's yeah, that? The beverage work? business is the same kind of thing. You're, you're bottling it. You got to make sure. Now are you going to put it in glass or are you going to put it in plastic? Right. All this stuff becomes weight, and then you're going to be shipping a lot of weight going around. So right. that's that's. That's the key. You got to be careful on what, where you're making, manufacturing stuff. All right. So, so that's kind of the difference between where, where you manufacture it. Labor rate and shipping costs are kind of. And get always, I tell fat inventors, get three quotes. Always, always, always get three different quotes. And when it comes to manufacturing things that can be manufactured anywhere, always have two or three manufacturers at your fingertips because, you know, sometimes one manufacturer can't do it. The other one, they get a little bit more expensive. You can actually keep them honest with the pricing. Okay. That's tip number one. Here's the downfall. And I'm going to tell you, and it hurts me, bites me in the, in, in the butt every single week. Minimum order quantities and lead times. Let me tell you something. Lead times from China have absolutely, can I use the word sucked on air? Sucked. Absolutely sucked. I've had situations where in January, I get an order for 20,000 units from Evine. Okay? January 1st. So I call up my lady up there, my agent, my person who works for me, okay, we need 20,000 of these units, and we need these things, and okay, we need them. And then she says to me, well, we won't take the order right now. I go, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, Chinese New Year's coming up. Chinese New Year, what? what? How long is that? Well, isn't it two weeks? No, no, no. Uh, you see, they're going to take two weeks off before the Chinese New Year. They're going to take it's two weeks after the Chinese New Year. Yeah, month, it's right. a month. Yep. And we kind of shut down for a month, and we're not going to start anything, so there's two weeks lost. So now i got six weeks before they even start the thing. And then it takes them 45 days to make the thing. Then it takes 30 more days to ship the thing. Oh, my goodness gracious. I had a situation there where I was getting an order placed in January and not receiving them till May. Mm. That's a five-month turnaround. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Hot business could live on a five-month selling window. No one. So you have to really dig deep and really research lead times. And you have to not just assume, that because when you ask them, they say, okay, no, no, it's 30 days to manufacture, 30 days to ship. You're going, okay, 60 days. All right, lead time, 60 days. Because don't forget, when you're dealing with China and America, you also have to take the lead time into consideration, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's not just how much it weighs or how much it costs to ship. You're also losing 30 days in your selling cycle. Right. All right? So sometimes we choose manu American manufacturers because they're quicker. And quicker, maybe it's worth 10 more cents, 15 more cents a bottle to make it quicker, right? Yeah. So maybe it's worth that. So you got to take in the quickness, minim, uh, manufacturing lead time. Everybody overlooks that. And let me tell you something. You got to really dig deep and research hard for that because, you know, a salesman, who, by the way, it's a salesman, right, who's talking to you about the lead times. They, they, they don't want to say they disguise it, but they always give you the best case scenario. You got to dig a lead, ask a few more questions and ask about not the best case scenario. Let's 
get a history and you want to talk to their clients who are maybe I always say to them, okay, give me a give me a customer you deal with already. I want to talk to them because I want to get their experience on lead times, right? That's a very important question when it comes to how do I choose a manufacturer. Yeah. You want one as your partner because basically they make money when you make money and you want to see the respect in that. You want to see that they're, they're always striving to make it work for you and they, they have to be transparent. Are they transparent or are they hiding the fact that, you know, three other bigger customers are in front of you, our machines are kind of tied up, your lead time is going to take too long. Those are important. Second thing I wanted to give you a little insight on manufacturing is minimum order quantities. Now, you were in the beverage business. Yep. What, what were your MOQs? Oh, you're talking uh, at least in the th tens of thousands of bottles. Tens of thousands of bottles. Yeah. So, you know, an inventor who walks up to you and says, hey, I, hey, I got this invention. I want your, uh, it's a liquid. It's a great thing. It's a protein drink. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they go, they want to buy 500 units. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to laugh at them. Oh, yeah, okay. You walk up to this guy who's selling them over there. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. That's 10,000 units. For We're not even turning the machine on yeah. unless we run it for 10,000 yeah. units. So minimum order quantities are very important because a lot of times the manufacturers will charge you a premium to short run the product. And by the way, when it comes to liquids, I always learned it's not the, you know, you're, you're not paying for the liquid in the bottle. You're paying for the machine, right? And so if they got to fire up the machine, clean out the, think about it, they got to clean out the machine, run your stuff and clean it out again. That's the cost. It's not how much liquid goes through the machine, right? Yeah, it's not bottle, how much bottles nothing, go whipping by, nothing. how much labels get slapped in the bottle. Those are incidental costs, actually. Right. It's always the bottling cost that costs money, not what's in the bottle, all right? And that's why, uh, and it all comes down to lead time, and it all comes down to minimum order quantity. Sometimes you can get a deal from them if you let's let the minimum order, the lead time be a little longer. Let them do it when it's comfortable for them. Let them do it in their downtime. So those are questions you need to ask. How can I get my cost by going to your downtime? Maybe I don't need the selling cycle so fast. And what's my minimum order quantity? So the takeaways today, MOQs, lead time, labor rates, shipping costs, and how that all affects your pricing. That's how you pick a good manufacturer. We have a lot of experience doing it. We have like 50, 60 of these guys going on all the time, and we've been doing it for 30 years. So if you have any questions, I want you to email me at ACOS, A-K-O-S, at mycoolinventions.com. There's a couple selling secrets for you today. A little good knowledge that you don't learn in school, you only learn on the street.